when we analyzed how the position vector changed, we know that the velocity for circular motion is given by the radius times the rate that the angle is changing, and it points tangential to the circle. So let's draw a few characteristic arrows to show that. At this point, we'll draw these pictures with d theta dt positive. So the velocity points like that, it points like this, points like that, and these are all the velocity vectors at different times. Notice that if we make, consider the special case in which d theta dt is a constant. In that instance, the magnitude of the velocity v is given by r magnitude of d theta dt, and that is also a constant. But the velocity vector is changing direction. And we know by definition that the acceleration is the derivative of velocity. And so what we see here is where we have a vector that's constant in magnitude but changing direction. And we now want to calculate the derivative in this special case. We refer to this case as uniform circular motion. So this special case is often called uniform circular motion. OK, how do we calculate the derivative of the velocity? Well, recall that the velocity vector r d theta dt, those are all constants. Because it's in the theta hat direction, once again, we'll decompose theta hat into its Cartesian components. You see it has a minus i hat component and a plus j hat component. The i hat component is opposite the angle. So we have minus sine theta of t i hat plus cosine theta of t j hat. So when I differentiate the velocity in time, this piece is constant. So I'm only again applying the chain rule to these two functions. So I have r d theta dt. And I differentiate sine, I get cosine with the minus sign. So I have minus cosine theta. I'll keep the function of t just so that you can see that. d theta dt i hat. Over here, the derivative of cosine is minus sine d theta dt. That's the chain rule. Sine of theta dt d theta dt j hat. And now I have this common d theta dt term, and I can pull it out, and I'll square it. Now, whether d theta dt is positive or negative, the square is always positive, so this quantity is always positive. And inside, I have, I'm also going to pull the minus sign out, and I have cosine theta of t i hat plus sine theta of t j hat. Now, what we have here is the unit vector r hat t. r hat has a cosine adjacent in the i hat direction and a sine component in the j hat direction. So our acceleration For a particle that's moving in a circle, we found that when it's moving at a constant rate of d theta dt, and let's recall what we meant by theta of t, and here's our particle, and we introduced our polar coordinates r hat and theta hat, then we found that the velocity was r d theta dt theta hat. And so let's assume that this quantity is positive, in which case the velocity is pointing in the positive theta hat direction. And that means that everywhere in the circle, the velocity is tangential to the circle. And the magnitude is a constant. So for this case of uniform circular motion, we calculated that the acceleration was equal to minus r d theta dt quantity squared r hat, which means that at every point, the acceleration vector is pointing towards the center.
Now, we can write that acceleration vector as a component A of R, R hat, where this component is given by R times d theta dt squared. It's, it's always negative because when you square this quantity, that's always a positive quantity. The minus sign, just to remember, that means that the acceleration is pointing inward. Now, how can we think about that? Well, if we look at the velocity vector, what's happening here is the velocity is not changing magnitude, but changing direction. And if you compare two points, and let's just pick two arbitrary points, so let's remove this acceleration for a moment and consider two arbitrary points, say at time t1 and t2. So our velocity vectors are tangent. The length of these vectors are the same. And if we move them tail to tail, vt2, and take the difference, delta v, where delta v is equal to v of t2 minus v of t1, then we can get an understanding why the acceleration is pointing inward, because recall that acceleration by definition is a limit as delta t goes to zero. That means as this point approaches that point of the change in velocity over time. And so when we look at this limit, as we shrink down our time interval between t2 and, t and t1, then this vector will point towards the center of the circle. And that's why the direction of A is in the minus r hat direction. Again, let's just recall that this is the case for what we called uniform circular motion, which is defined by the condition that d theta dt is a constant.